Good morning, welcome back to another session of online class. So for today's class, we will be focusing on the influences of the curriculum. Ok? Donc, school curriculum, l'ISUE a vraiment un grand rôle par rapport à cultural reproduction. Donc, c'est quoi normalement cultural reproduction? C'est un concept qui est introduit par le sociologue Pierre Bourdieu. Donc, according to Pierre Bourdieu, cultural reproduction is the social process through which culture is reproduced across generations, especially through the socializing influence of major institutions such as school. Quand nous pensons au cultural reproduction, comme le mot lui-même peut dire, c'est un procès social par rapport à comment nous capables de reproduire culture, surtout dominant culture of the society, de génération à génération. Et surtout nous capables de reproduire the dominant culture, c'est surtout par l'aide de ben major institutions of the society. And the band, plus grand major institutions of the society, qui aident pour reproduire the dominant culture, c'est school. It is school. So Pierre Bourdieu applied the concept in particular to the ways in which social institutions such as schools are used to pass along cultural ideas that underline and support the privileged position of the dominant group or social class. Quand nous pensons sur cultural reproduction, comme on nous dit, c'est reproduire the major culture. Mais surtout quand nous pensons reproduire major culture, c'est surtout pour support the privileged position of the dominant group or social class. Quand nous pensons reproduire the dominant culture, c'est tout simplement pour qui ben un groupe dominant de la société est capable de maintenir cette place et surtout nous cause par rapport à social class. So as mentioned earlier, the school curriculum plays a big role in the cultural reproduction. But rather than the official curriculum, there is the ethnocentric curriculum, gendered curriculum and the hidden curriculum which takes place in the informal education. Donc, comment est-ce que l'école normalement les a un grand rôle par rapport à cultural reproduction? C'est surtout par ce curriculum. Mais nous besoin connaître que ce n'est pas par official curriculum. Comme on peut connaître official curriculum, ça veut dire que ce n'est pas par rapport à syllabus, à l'examen. Mais nous avons ethnocentric curriculum nous avons aussi un gendered curriculum et aussi nous avons un hidden curriculum qui prend part de l'école par informal education. Donc, premier d'abord, nous pouvons être le ethnocentric curriculum. Donc, nous avons déjà trouvé ce thème de ethnocentric curriculum là, quand nous pouvons faire le educational underachievement, surtout par rapport à un ethnic group. Maintenant, c'est quoi? Ethnocentric curriculum. Let's do Erika. Donc, ethnocentric curriculum, c'est tout simplement une attitude ou, ou bien une policy, vous êtes capable de dire, qui nous donne priorité à un certain ethnic group et nous disregard the others. Nous ne prenons pas en considération même les autres ethnic groups qui est non. Ok? So, ethnocentric curriculum refers to the attitude of policy which gives priority to a particular ethnic group while disregarding others. An ethnocentric curriculum is one that reflects a narrow belief based on the superiority surrounding a dominant ethnic group or culture. Donc, quand nous pensons au ethnic, uh, ethnocentric curriculum, c'est tout simplement un curriculum que nous peut donner l'importance à un certain dominant ethnic group ou bien culture et nous peut disregard, nous ne pouvons pas prendre en compte, nous ne pouvons pas prendre en considération ben, les autres ethnic groups, les autres cultures. So, for example, in Britain, 
In Britain, it has been observed to be having an ethnocentric curriculum that centers itself around a white British culture and thus leading to a cultural reproduction with regard to the culture of the majority, that is, the British culture. Donc, avec l'aide de un ethnocentric curriculum, nous capables et une cultural reproduction. La qu'on nous pégose de cultural reproduction, un des ben plus grands exemples qui nous est lancé par rapport à British culture. Quand nous cause le curriculum of the British school culture, c'est sûr que ce reproduire ce cultural, ce te reproduire ce culture, c'est par rapport à the culture of the very white British culture. Ça veut dire nous connais que en British, it is also considered as being a multicultural country. Mais quand nous cause par rapport à ce culture. Je vous mettre l'emphase plus que tes autres cultures in terms of the white culture. And they will disregard. Je ne vais pas en considération the black culture ou bien the Indian culture, Asian culture, etc. Et c'est surtout que je peux faire un sujet côté l'histoire, tout ça. Que je peux, uh, je peux donner l'exemple plus que tes ben, la famille royale. So this is an ethnocentric curriculum. The so goals for multiculturalism have had little to no success and a, cur a curriculum that is diverse and celebrate all of its of its students okay donc même nous dire que the uh, britain celebrate for multiculturalism mais seulement je pas prendre en considération je pas célébrer ben ben culture de ben les autres uh, pupils background So education is still favoring children from a white and British background, and they tend to leave pupils outside of this demographic, marginalized, and excluded culture. The impact of this exclusion is detrimental to a child and the development of their confidence. So as the years progress, they may lose confidence in their identity and also felt they also feel left out because of this. So the ethnocentric curriculum is failing to provide a meritocratic education for all of its students. Okay? Donc ça c'est un major example concerning the ethnocentric curriculum. Okay? C'est pas que en Britain en Britain, sorry, mais aussi en Amérique aussi, que the, 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 they tend to celebrate more a white and American culture at school compared to they tend to disregard that they have other ethnic students uh, belonging to other ethnic minority groups. Next, we have the gendered curriculum. So, you can put the emphasis plus que des textbooks and the subject choice and activities. When I'm talking about gendered curriculum, even though we keep talking about the underachievement of boys, but yet we tend to see that there are certain books where uh, there is lack of role model with regard to uh, female personalities or also we tend to encourage boys and girls towards specific subject choices as well as activities at school. So the major areas of the gendered curriculum that dis disadvantage girls are for the textbooks, subject choice and activities since these convey the message to students on how different occupations are gendered. Ok, ben sujet qui nous fait à l'école, c'est surtout par rapport à future occupation, which normally are, which are generally gender gendered. Ça veut dire in a specific jobs for girls and specific jobs for boys. So in textbooks, for example, writers such as Le Bon, Stanworth. Spender and Ronald have shown how children's books are gender stereotyped in terms of the messages they, con they convert to pupils. Par rapport à un ben, livre qui nous servit à l'école, il y a ben, certains écrivains qui montraient 
qui comment ben children books are very gender stereotypes. Ça veut dire, il y a certains ben messages dans ben livre que te montrer qui est une certaine ben personnalité qui n'a plus d'importance. For example, if we are looking for uh, Disney books, ok? Tu les temps se peut trouver qui tu les temps pour une un prince. Ça veut dire the male character is uh, the stronger character in the book, whereas the girl is always the passive one, always the one who is seeking for help. Donc c'est ça ben gender stereotyped messages qui we tend to con which the books tend to convert to pupils. So in the books, normally males tend to appear more frequently and are more likely to be shown in active rather than passive roles. There are clear stereotypes about how male and female should look and also behave. So Leban has noted how stereotyping is more pronounced in children books rather than in reality. And it's bad. Sorry, and Spender has argued that women are more frequently invisible. They really appear in textbooks aimed at maths and science pupils. Donc, surtout par, par rapport à les sujets, ok? Dans les sujets tels que mathématiques et sciences, vous pouvez trouver que women, they are frequently invisible. Et surtout quand vous pouvez que tu es grand mathématicien ou bien même un grand scientist, they are mostly men, ok? So what happens is that children tend to have the impression, they tend to have the idea that maths and science subjects are just for boys, but not for girls. So although we have looked at the idea of gendered curriculum in terms of subject choice, sports activities and subjects such as cookery, woodwork and metalwork remain gendered, where pupils are given a choice. Ok? Surtout quand nous cause par rapport à les activités ou bien les sujets, donc vous pouvez trouver qu'il y a une certaine ben sujet qui remain gendered. Nous avons tel que cookery, today we, we tend to say it as home economics, ok? Nous avons aussi ben ça fait de, de metal work ou bien wood work, mais ici à Maurice nous avons dit en termes de design and technology, que tu dis still remain gendered, ça veut dire une spécifique, ben si vous pouvez opter la plupart du temps pour home economics, whereas boys are going to opt for design and tech. But with, uh, today you can say that with the new introduction of the nine year schooling, Donc, ben, les cours peuvent faire les deux maintenant. Mais auparavant, ce n'était pas le cas. OK? So, also, there has been an observation with, which has been done by Clary Code. OK? He did, uh, Clary Code did an, an observation, sorry, of primary school teaching. And he noted that because... Boys require more control and discipline. They have more contact with their teachers. And also in terms of uh, lessons which are organized and structured around assumption about the kind of things and activities that will keep the interest of and will help control of boys. Okay? Donc, uh, Clary Cook, il fait une observation par rapport à l'école primaire, à l'école parmi les profs. C'est une remarque qui ben garçon en termes de discipline, they need more control, ok? Et aussi c'est capable en termes of interaction, boys tend to have more interaction with the teachers, but in a negative way, ok? And also they tend to look for activities. When we are talking about activities, it is mostly outdoor activities, which is going to keep control of boys, especially. Okay, another, st uh, another st uh, study was done by Troiler, who notes language is a very significant discriminatory medium in both education and society. English, for example, generally favors masculine forms of expression, such as dustman, postman, spokesman as well as using the term men to signify humanity as a whole, mankind, men management. So all these type of medium tend to favor masculine form of expression. Que nous donne l'impression qui ben terme en masculin qui n'a plus l'importance. 
Okay, and also another st uh, study was done by Scott. He, he did a study on patriarchy in a school textbook and he found that three basic themes in her analysis of curricular material. That is, we tend to portray women in a more subordinate or decorative role. And also, women tend to fail to feature in many books. Okay, Donc, when we're talking about a gender curriculum, you can say that in practically some textbooks or certain subject choices in the textbook, there is the invisibility of women. Women are practically invisible. So this is why certain girls tend to opt for certain subjects, such as literature or home economics. Whereas boys tend to, to opt for subjects such as science, math, design, computer, etc. Another type of curriculum which tend to help for the cultural reproduction is hidden curriculum, mm. which takes place for the informal education. So it is very important to know that we have two types of curriculum at school. We have the official curriculum, which is examinable. That is, we students have a syllabus to follow and at the end of the year, they will have an exam. And also we have the hidden curriculum. As the word states itself, it is hidden. We are, students are unaware about it. They learn things uh, unaware that they are learning specific things. And it takes place through informal education informal education is not examinable okay so the hidden curriculum simply refers to messages communicated by the organization and operating of school apart from the official or public statements of school mission and subject area curriculum guideline Okay. Donc, hidden curriculum, c'est tout simplement un ben, message qui nous fait passer par l'organisation et comment l'école peut opérer. This is the hidden curriculum, compared to, comme on dit, the official curriculum. In other words, the medium is a key source of messages. For the hidden curriculum, we tend to convey certain messages qui ben, sont en unaware of, surtout quand nous pouvons in terms of messages, it's surely on the end. Comment nous pour, comment nous faire ben ça pour accepter certain type de attitude, de valeur, de beliefs, ou bien même de behavior. Okay, so this is done for the hidden curriculum. So the messages of the hidden curriculum usually deals with attitudes, values, beliefs, and behavior. So a major purpose of the hidden curriculum of the school has been cultural transmission or teaching students the routine for getting along in school and the larger society. Comment nous disons que hidden curriculum est help for cultural reproduction. Okay? Qui fait nous dire cultural reproduction? C'est tout simplement ce qui ben les élèves peuvent apprendre pour le hidden curriculum. Ben surtout en termes de ben routines, to get along. Nous montrons que ben certaines rules and regulations que nous besoin nous nous formons en termes de discipline. Ça même qui pour après, je pour reproduire les in the larger society. Surtout en termes de travail. C'est 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 pour cela nous dire ça and cultural reproduction. So in other words, the hidden curriculum usually serves to maintain the status quo. Specifically, the dominant culture and prevailing socioeconomic hierarchy, thus leading to cultural reproduction. Okay, don't can you because of a hidden curriculum? So to go to hidden curriculum, you tend to learn about hierarchy. Okay, hierarchy, c'est quoi? C'est tout simplement qui à l'école de connaître un certain groupe de personnes qui dominent dans la dans l'école, telles que rectrices, les profs, non-teaching, etc. Okay, so what happened is that you learn that you have to accept the authority from this dominant group. Donc, ça même qui, ça même qui nous dit cultural reproduction, c'est parce que, et non, dans la société aussi, nous avons une socio-economic hierarchy. Que nous avons besoin d'accepter une certaine dominant culture afterward. So this is normally how these curriculum help for cultural reproduction in the society.